In this lesson, we are going to discuss image formation in convex mirrors through ray diagramming. At the end of this video lesson, you should be able to identify some practical uses of convex mirrors and predict the qualitative characteristics of images formed by concave mirrors through ray diagramming. Convex mirrors can be easily remembered as mirror balls. In mirror balls, the reflective surface is on its exterior, making the reflective surface curve outward which meets the light incident onto it. Because of its geometry, it is used to reflect and scatter light just like in this mirror ball. Convex mirrors only produce one type of image regardless of where we put the object in front of the mirror. As we can see in this video, the girl's image is reduced and formed inside the mirror which makes it upright and virtual. But what are some of the functions of convex mirrors? Convex mirrors are used as car side mirrors to reduce the image size of the objects at the back and side of the car. This gives the driver a glimpse or view of objects beyond the peripheral vision or blind spot. Convex mirrors are also used for lateral visibility on road junctions. These are also used in convenience stores in which the entire store is visible to the staff on the counter area to check for any signs of theft. But how are images formed in convex mirrors? Objects in front of convex mirrors are always greater than the vertex. There are three rays to be used in ray diagramming convex mirrors, but we only need two. Each ray is divided into two. The incident rays are drawn in solid lines, and the reflected rays are drawn using broken lines. With ray diagramming, we will be able to describe the image's location, orientation, type, and size. These qualitative characteristics can be abbreviated as LUTs. Since the object is in front of the mirror, we may put it anywhere at the left of the mirror. Now, let us draw the following rays. The first one is the principal ray. Its reflected ray is going from the tip of the object to the mirror but parallel to the principal axis. It needs to be reflected from the focal point. But since the focal point of the convex mirror is in the non-reflective area, the ray cannot come from the focus. What we need to do is to have an imaginary segment connecting the focus to where the incident principal ray has touched the mirror. From there, we are going to follow the orientation of the imaginary reflected principal ray and reflect it away from the mirror. The second ray is the focal ray. It is a ray incident to the focus, but since this is a convex mirror, light cannot enter the mirror to reach the focus. What we need to do is to draw an imaginary line connecting the tip of the object to the focal point. This is our guide for the incident ray, which will be drawn only up to the mirror. Then, it will be reflected parallel to the principal axis. Lastly, the third and optional ray, we have the central ray. The incident light here should reach C. However, it is not possible due to reflectivity. Hence, we are just going to draw an imaginary segment connecting the object to the center of curvature. From the mirror, it will reflect following the imaginary ray. The image will form on the intersection of the reflected rays. Here, we can see that no reflected rays will intersect outside the mirror. This does not mean that no image is formed we can still look for an intersection in the mirror. We just need to extend all reflected rays inward. As we can see here, there's already an intersection in the mirror. This is where the image will be formed. Again, the central ray is optional. Therefore, we can omit this ray. Let us now identify the qualitative characteristics of this image. For the image location, we are going to describe it relative to the points on the diagram. Since the image is nearest to F, we are going to use it as a reference point. However, we cannot say that the image is just greater than F because all areas before the mirror are greater than F. With this, we will also use the vertex as another reference point. The image is formed in between the vertex and focus. This gives us the image location D sub i is less than V but greater than F. For the orientation, we can see that the intersection is formed above the principal axis. This means that it is upright. Automatically, its image type is virtual. Another explanation for this is that the rays did not intersect in front of the mirror to create the image. Lastly, for the size, we can see that the image is smaller than the object. 
this means that the image is reduced. In summary, for an object placed anywhere in front of a convex mirror, the image will be in between V and F, upright, virtual, and reduced. To conclude this lesson, let us review the following key points. Convex mirrors are spherical mirrors with an external reflective surface and are used primarily to diverge light. The three rays used in diagramming image formation in convex mirrors are the principal ray, focal ray, and central ray. And lastly, convex mirrors create only one type of image. It is upright, virtual, and reduced image located in the mirror. And that ends our discussion on image formation in convex mirrors through ray diagramming.